Well, thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Molly Yole, and I serve as the Digital Content Coordinator um, for the Office of E-Learning, um, a team within the Indiana Department of Education. Um, and we're excited to have you join us um, for an E-Learning Lab webinar. Um, hopefully you'll check back and um, take advantage of some of our other professional development offerings through the E-Learning Lab. Um, we usually host one to two webinars a month, and so we're excited to have you. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and please mute mute, sorry, your um, line, and if you're on a phone, it's typically easier to just mute your phone as opposed to trying to do the star number um, on the actual webinar system. So also uh, make sure if you are sending a message that you have the drop-down selected um, to send to everyone, uh, unless you are trying to privately message someone on the call. All right. All should be muted. All right, thanks, Mary. Um, well, before we get started and um, we hear about uh, a few different learning management systems from our wonderful presenters today, I um, just wanted to let you know about an upcoming webinar at the end of the month um, using student voice to amplify student or amplify learning. Um, so make sure you check that out. Um, it'll be on the same page that you registered for this um, webinar also. Um, if you're unfamiliar with our uh, social media um, network, um, we have a pretty large Twitter following and a pretty active community. Um, so if you are on Twitter already, um, please make sure you share out anything you learned today with our hashtag I, I Learn. Um, and if you're not on Twitter and you want to join Twitter and get connected to our network and see what um, it's all about and how you can learn um, from other people, not just across the state, but across the country and the world, um, feel free to shoot one of our team members an email or shoot us a message via one of our other um, connections, and we will definitely get with you to get you connected. Um, also, we have Twitter chats every Thursday night um, at 9 p.m. Eastern, and this week we have um, one of our administrators from across the state, Amy Heaven, and she's going to continue her series, Leading Digital Opportunities. And we usually have guest monitors. Um, uh, moderators a couple times a month. All right, so what's so great about learning management systems? We're hopeful that this webinar will be beneficial um, to those folks who are in a district who may not have an officially adopted LMS or who maybe are shopping for a learning management system. Um, according to our 2017 um, test plan data, we did notice that we had between 20 and 40 districts across the state that didn't have an officially adopted LMS or selected perhaps maybe an SIS um, when answering about the LMS that they use in their district. So maybe you're using um, pieces of your student information system um, to cover the learning management side. So we thought there was a need maybe to share about the learning management systems that are being used across the state of Indiana. Um, and according to our 2017 tech plan data, we found that there are four um, learning management systems that kind of lead the way um, with regard to what everyone's using across the state. So um, we picked those four, and then we found a teacher or a coach or an administrator um, to represent each of those learning management systems, just to share what they love so much about their learning management system. And we all know that many of them have similar features, um, and so it's going to be really neat to see um, how these teachers are taking advantage um, of these particular systems and all that they have to offer and how it really is transforming um, learning for students and improving communication not only within the school um, but outside of the school as well. So we're excited to have Mitch Mosby here, um, Sarah Wilking, Judy Brummett, and Michael D. I'm going to let him pronounce his name for you when um, he introduces himself, um, just to save myself the embarrassment. So thank you to our four um, presenters today. They're going to have roughly 10 to 12 minutes, and then at the end, um, we'll answer some questions. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask them in the chat box, and we can try to keep track of those um, as we go along. All right, I think we're ready to begin officially.
All right, so we have Mitch Mosby um, from Noblesville Schools. He's actually one of our rock stars of curation um, and does some awesome work in the elementary classroom. And I love having Mitch as an example um, and presenter today because Mitch is actually an elementary classroom teacher and a lot of people really struggle with how, how does this look at the elementary level and, you know, can my students take advantage of all the features um, that are available and how does that workflow look because they are teaching younger students. So Mitch, I think, is going to share how that works in his classroom and some of the awesome things that he's seen. So Mitch, if you're ready, you can go ahead. Yep. All right. Thank you. So as you mentioned, my name is Mitch Mosby. I currently teach fourth grade, but I have also used um, Canvas LMS with first graders as well. So I've had about two years with fourth graders and almost three years with first graders. So if you can please go to the next slide. So some of the benefits of Canvas is that it's very customizable um, and it's great for all grade levels. So a lot of the examples that I'll show are from fourth grade. Um, one of the things that we've adopted as a district is using course templates. So um, all of our math classes use a blue template. All of our reading courses use a red template. So that's something that you can easily do, but then you can also make it primary friendly. There's also integration with a lot of external apps. So a lot of the tools that you might already be using in your classroom can be embedded within Canvas. And then it's also very convenient for whenever you have guest teachers and you have virtual days. And then one of the nice things about this is the Canvas Commons. So if you're familiar with Pinterest, um, I'll kind of talk about that later in the presentation. So on the next slide, um, what I'll share with you is this is whenever I taught first grade. So this is how I set up my pages for my students. So this would be the landing page whenever you get onto Canvas. And um, all they would do is simply click on the button and it would take them to wherever they needed to go. So as you can see, I would have my group lesson. If we were doing inquiry, I could take them to a research page. So I can really set up the course however I'd like to make it easier for my students. So obviously using bright, colorful things, easy for my students to see. And so I had on the left would be my reading course, in the middle would be my writing course, and then on my right would be the math course. So students, this would be the first thing that they would see whenever they would click on reading for the day. On the next slide is a preview of what I currently use with my students. So um, as I had mentioned earlier, um, we use a template amongst the district. So we have it set out for all the different units. And then on the right side is an actual lesson page that I have for my students. So this is something we have set up. So you have your key concepts and skills as long as bell work, today's lesson, and then I can include other resources in it as well. So on the next thing I said that I mentioned was kind of talking about that tool integration. These are just a very few amount of the tools that you can embed within your Canvas pages. So you can see that on the right side, if I have an NBC Learn video or I have an Edu Creations or a Khan Academy, I can simply click on it, search it, and then it'll embed it directly in the page. So sometimes when you're trying to use different tools um, within your Canvas and your learning management system, it's very easy to add that within Canvas. Um, on the next slide, I just have another example of what I've done with my students. So we've talked you know, about blends and digraphs with first graders. So what I've done is I've embedded a YouTube video as well as the Quizlet. So it gives them an opportunity um, to practice their flashcards. I can do another assessment in there, but it makes it really easy to figure out what, um, what I want my students to work on, and then all of it can be embedded within the course. Um, on the next thing, what I like to do is use those formative assessments. So as you can see, I use one tool formative, and then I can just have students respond directly within a Canvas page. So sometimes whenever, especially with younger grades, Whenever you're going from one app to another, it might be difficult for some students, but there are so many opportunities to embed that in one page that students can stay within the Canvas app and not have to go to other places. On the right side, um, what I've done with students is they would just do a quick read to self log or read to someone log whenever I was in first grade, so I can embed a Google form. So if you're a Google Apps for Education district, um, you can embed all of your Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Forms 
directly into Canvas. So it's a nice thing to not have to go out of the app because it'll keep everything in there. Um, and then here's a few more examples um, on the next slide that I've done with my students. So whenever I have a guest teacher and then instead of writing a lesson plan, if I've used a page before with them, and what's nice is that you can always copy courses. So if you've done something in one course and you want it to be used in another one, you don't have to recreate it. You can simply copy it to a new one. So there might be a guided reading lesson template. One of the benefits, um, especially teaching a primary grade, is that you have to repeat yourself a lot. Um, and in the middle, you can see that whenever we were doing words their way activities, there was all these instructional videos that my students could play if they had kind of like they had trouble with the procedures and what was expected of them. So you can embed videos of yourself. You can record directly on Canvas or you can upload a video. And then there on the right side is just another page that I've done with my kids. So whenever I'm gone and outside the classroom, I can still um, have pages um, and videos of myself teaching the material even when I'm not in the classroom. And on the last slide um, that I'll be sharing today, it's about the Canvas Commons. Um, one of the benefits of the Canvas Commons is that it's like a Pinterest for your LMS. So if you have any um, quizzes, assessments, pages, courses that you want to share with teammates, or you're trying to just get started with Canvas and you don't know where to start, you can go to the Commons and import it into your own course. Um, so there's always resources available to help you out, especially when getting started. And that's just a kind of a brief run through of Canvas. If you have any questions, um, my contact information is on the last slide, um, on the next slide, and then I believe it was at the beginning of the presentation as well. But if you have any questions throughout the rest of the webinar, if you would just want to type them into the chat bar, I'll be sure to answer them. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mitch. It's awesome um, how you're able to take advantage of all these features, even with your younger students. Um, and I love that you can copy the pages so you don't have to rebuild things. Um, that's a pretty nice feature. And then they do have a really nice commons area um, for digital content. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and be sure to ask Mitch questions. He is a wealth of knowledge. All right, Sarah, you are up. Um, Sarah is coming to us from the MSD of Wayne Township. And if you're ready, Sarah, you may go ahead. I'm ready. Um, again, my name is Sarah Wilking. I'm the Virtual and Blended Learning Specialist um, at Wayne Township in Indianapolis. Uh, this is my first year in Wayne. And I'm coming into this from, I think, I mean, a, a unique perspective. In my old district, we were uh, Google Classroom. And so um, moving to Wayne, um, I've gotten to experience and learn a new learning management system, and that is its learning. So we're in its learning district. Um, and we're using it for a lot of different things. So I am not in the traditional classroom anymore. Um, I'm helping primarily with secondary, um, our secondary schools. But I'm also one of um, our virtual high school teachers. So I'm also using its learning um, with my online course. So I'm getting to, to do kind of uh, a couple of different things with it. So um, it's exciting. Uh, so if you'll, next slide. So just a little bit of background um, on this. We have branded, um, so we are using its learning, but we kind of branded it as the uh, Wayne Learning Hub. So a lot of our teachers um, may not even recognize that it's, it's learning. We call it the hub. Uh, and they know that's where they go to, to find a lot of the material. We've been with its learning for about two years. And I've kind of focused on three different things that we're using um, its learning for. And it's kind of uh, maybe unique to its learning um, and different that, that I think that's pretty cool. Um, and that's online and, um, online and blended learning. So we do have a virtual high school and we have a lot of blended learning programs in the district. And so we use our um, It's Learning to organize all of that material. So I'll show you what that kind of looks like for us. Um, we use individualized learning plans or personalized um, PD for our online or virtual teachers. And so that's kind of a unique thing and um, that we've been working with and that's a really um, neat feature that It's Learning has. Um, and could be used in the classroom as well as for professional development. And then our curriculum department houses all of our curriculum within the hub, um, within its learning. 
And so it's a really, it's organized um, very neatly. Teachers know where to go and find that curriculum. So if we go to the next slide, I'll show you what it kind of looks like, um, our organization looks like for our courses. Um, so this is just uh, a couple of screenshots so you can kind of see what our organization looks like. Um, so we use, we've been uh, this year kind of moved our um, virtual or online curriculum, our blended curriculum into plans in its learning. And so it's not just putting the curriculum in folders um, that students have to click through. It's a lot more um, organized. They can click the arrows. They have access to all of the materials. Um, and it's easy to navigate for them. So they can easily go back and forth uh, between the different content features and, use, and, and get to that information very easily. Um, we have, um, for our professional development as well, organized um, our materials that our teachers would need to get to this way as well. So they're learning just like our students learn. So we're making sure we're modeling uh, for professional development just as our uh, students would be using the material and it's learning as well. Next slide. And this is, uh, this is kind of where we've been spending a lot of our time. Um, I do a lot of work with our virtual high school. And those teachers are not all within uh, the Wayne Township District. Um, so we have them all over the place. And so in order to do professional development for them, we have to do it completely online. And we have been focusing a lot on personalization in the classroom. And so we, f we feel that if we are asking our teachers um, to personalize in the classroom, we should also be personalizing professional development for those teachers. And so I've come in to this um, a little bit later, uh, but initially this was um, started in, in one of the blended programs and then um, kind of iteration working with then the virtual um, high school uh, teachers. And they were um, asked at their, they do have a, we have an um, one time during the year that we get to get together. And so last summer before I joined um, Wayne Township, they were asked about this individualized learning plan where they get to choose their, their professional development. It was very open. Um, they got to do, they have, there was so much choice. They could do a, a lot of different things and um, they didn't really like all that choice, um, some of them. Some of them did. Um, so we've kind of narrowed it down. And um, on the screen, you can kind of see three screenshots, how we can set up our individualized learning plans. And we're just giving teachers that, that choice so they can choose um, what they want to do. And so we, we do this quarterly for our teachers. Um, they, have, they have to do the webinar um, every quarter. They have to do too many courses sometime during the year, one of the two of the four quarters. Um, and then the rest of it, they really get to, to pick and choose what they want to do. We make sure that we organize it so it's just like our students are receiving the content. Um, but this is something that could also be used with classroom teachers. They could set up um, individualized learning plans for their students um, and giving them more voice and choice in the classroom as well. Um, next slide. And then um, our curriculum department um, does a lot within its learning. They have um, everything um, organized in, in its learning in the collaborative cu curriculum. And so the teachers are able to self-enroll into the um, collaborative curriculum courses. Uh, and then everything's kind of mapped out. So that first screenshot in the top left corner kind of shows um, where that, that starting page is that they're going to get to. Um, and it's got everything mapped out. We're going to see um, grade levels, well, the actual curriculum maps are going to be there for the teachers to be able to access. Um, and then they're going to be able to, to get to the different grade levels or subjects, depending on um, where we're at. We have individual school content. Um, so each school has their own folder that they can put content in and work with content. There's district resources that they can work with, uh, teacher resources and student resources. So this is kind of that, that one-stop shop for the curriculum 
um, they're not having to go out somewhere else to, to get that. We're not, um, you know, having to share through some other platform. They're able to do this all in the, the LMS that they're using within their classrooms. So um, it's, it's a nice way to get to that material and use that material, and it's where they're working on that material um, and building that content and updating and, and going through all of that. So it's a nice um, kind of area that we can do that. We're also making sure that as we start going through um, adoptions, so textbook adoptions, anything that we can, um, any materials that we adopt that we can um, have in our hub, in its learning, um, we are connecting those as much as possible. So that way it's another, it's not another place that our teachers have to go. So they are doing that within the curriculum department too, um, making things just as easy as we can for our teachers um, with just that one place that they can kind of focus on everything. Um, if you have any questions, I kind of went through it kind of quick, uh, but if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, my contact information, my, my Twitter handle is there, um, and my contact information was at the beginning of the presentation. All right, well, thank you. Um, there, do you have an answer? Um, someone oh. asked, um, Dick had asked, do you use the SSO with your LMS like Clever? Yes, um, we do have um, we do have single sign on. Um, yes, our con uh, Stephen Gardner is in our curriculum department. He's on the chat right now. Um, he is uh, he kind of answered the question in there. Um, we use Rapid Identity, um, and our contact person is Dana Lyle. She does um, a lot of the work with our adopted resources and all of our single sign-on kinds of stuff. So she's a great resource to contact, and if you need her contact information, just let me know. Great, thank you. Yeah, um, one of the awesome things, I can actually um, post it in the chat, because Dana is a great resource. And like I'd mentioned before, I think one of the reasons that Wayne has been so successful in their digital learning kind of implementation over the last five, six, seven years that we've been working with them fairly closely is because your tech department, your curriculum part, department do work very closely together. Um, and so it's an amazing team that you guys have. And I like that you showed the curriculum mapping because that's definitely something I know you guys did in the beginning before implementing any sort of one-to-one -one initiative in your buildings was you first got your curriculum aligned. Um, yeah. And that's a, that was a really great strategy. Yeah, and I mean, I'm coming in from, from a different district and coming into something uh -huh. like this where it's already, and like, it, it's amazing that it's all in one place. It's all, um, and everything, the technology and curriculum is all tying together. And I think it, it's just been wonderful to come into something like that and see how it just kind of works together. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. And if anyone thank has you. any other questions, um, feel free to pop in the chat and we'll get to it at the end. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mary, who's up next? Michael. You ready, Michael? Absolutely. Uh, All right, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Awesome. Uh, greetings, everybody, from the region up here in northwest Indiana. Um, my name is Michael D. Pasquale, uh, just for pronunciation's sake. Um, I'm the Director of Technology Integration for Portage Township Schools. Uh, what, what makes my situation unique is I was a uh, band director for 14 years uh, and then um, went into administration and then was asked to move into this uh, technology integration position, which has now changed names to uh, Director of Innovative Learning uh, for Portage Schools. Uh, Portage Schools has been real blessed in the fact that we've been looking at learning management systems for many, many, many years. Uh, we started off with our own web design based uh, uh, learning management system that we did from our own website platform. Uh, we adopted, uh, we're early adopters of uh, Moodle. And then um, uh, when this, the state decided to go with My Big Campus, we started to look at that and we brought a team on board and there was a lot of deep discussion about uh, adopting My Big Campus. And uh, it was pretty interesting that our team was very, very convinced uh, very quickly to uh, uh, adopt Schoology, even though My Big Campus was at that time offered to our school district for free. Um, Schoology just had that something that our district fell in love with. So we've been actually using Schoology for 
um, well over three years. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a nice interface, and if you want to go to the next uh, slide. Uh, we are using it for our LMS 6th through 12th grade right now. Um, we are still using Google Classroom for our K through 5 um, with an, a plan to expand into grades 3 through 5 um, because our elementaries have seen what our secondary is using and uh, how much they enjoy it. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide. The interface is super easy to use and that was one of the big things that the the teachers and our tech team had that discussion of, we wanted to pick a, a learning management system where uh, we could hand it to anybody and they could manipulate it at a very basic level, at a comfortable level, uh, without much professional development, um, even though we offered a lot of professional development. And the first thing that all our teachers and our students, because we actually brought students on board to evaluate, and if any of you are new to, um, looking at uh, learning management systems, I highly encourage you to bring uh, uh, students into the mix and the conversation. You'd be quite surprised at the uh, perspective that they bring. Um, and that was uh, quite uh, influential in the fact that they right away said, hey, it looks like Facebook. It reminds me of uh, social media. And I, I'm easily able to click around it in a way that, uh, that I can easily get at those things right away. Um, and so that's why we uh, lean towards uh, Schoology at first was in regards to its uh, interface. If you want to go to the next slide. So one of the things that was mentioned earlier in, in, in Canvas and, and, and Schoology is, is quite the same way as our passion and love for the ability to bring in third-party applications. Um, we are very passionate about what we use in regards to Khan Academy, um, a lot of the Edmentum series, IXL, uh, Play-Doh, uh, play uh, and the list goes on and on. And the great thing about um, Schoology is the LTI compliance and bringing those things in um, was very valuable to us uh, that we have um, uh, the ability that we can easily bring in third-party apps for many reasons. One, just for the interface being easy to use. Uh, number two is the fact that a lot of teachers were very concerned at first when we got to one-to-one -to -one with digital citizenship and those types of things. They were concerned that they didn't want kids just getting out to the Internet um, and jumping around to uh, this website at first to get them comfortable with understanding that process. So being able to bring third-party applications into the LMS where it was interface inside of there, um, that made teachers more comfortable knowing that um, they weren't having to do all of that navigation to get at those items. Um, so that was uh, exciting to them. And the other thing that's exciting is that those third-party third applications are not just uh, brought in or pushed in by the organizational level. So many of them can be pushed in by the teacher themselves, which I think is uh, a really great because there's that um, independence of how they develop their um, their, their point of the LMS as a teacher, um, but then also there's the organizational must-haves or, uh, as we say, uh, the uh, expectations um, that are required of us in regards to what we use um, as an organizational level. Next slide. So, as we said, the advantage of the LTI and the app interface is that literally that video from NBC Learn, YouTube, um, you name it, and the list goes on and on, even uh, Vimeo, uh, those things can be brought in. Uh, it's a great thing. A lot of people enjoy the videos of YouTube. They don't enjoy the part of the YouTube videos where they have to deal with the ads or the self-selecting videos after the fact. Um, with a lot of these LMSs, they've done a great job in regards to you get only the video that you're looking for. Um, it's not going to push ads or it's not going to have um, – uh, suggested videos after the fact that may be um, content inappropriate or, or, or just not a part of what you're trying to do there. Um, so that was a great advantage also. Next slide. So LTI apps that we use, we're really excited. We use Plato as both a coursework uh, platform for many of our students. Um, we have some courses that we uh, don't have in-house teachers to offer, so we were able to offer some of that coursework, um, but primarily for also our credit recovery. 
which is great for our alternative schools, uh, or our alternative school, excuse me, um, in the fact that we are able to offer um, a lot of those same exact experiences, even though they're in uh, alternative environment that they would in the classroom. Um, and just kind of a side note, what is great is, uh, as mentioned in the other uh, learning management platforms, is that teachers collaboratively can share their resources uh, no matter what course they're teaching. So if I'm an Algebra One teacher uh, in one building but teaching alternative school, those resources can be shared uh, collaboratively and, and used um, so that uh, teachers can use their perceived strengths in their classroom, but then also seek others on their perceived weaknesses and bring their strengths into their classroom um, through the LMS, which is so beneficial. Next slide. The G Suite integration has been uh, uh, just a must have. Uh, the LMS, if you're going to evaluate an LMS and you're using Google uh, G Suite or Google Apps for Education, for those of you that use the older terminology, um, that is a must have. The, the, the ability to open up a doc, uh, manipulate that doc inside of your LMS, save it, and then it still goes to your drive, but then still pushes to the teacher for grading. Um, has been of great benefit and uh, something that our teachers have been uh, very appreciative of and especially our students. Next slide. One of the big things that we're, we're a big PowerSchool user um, and uh, that's been our SIS for many years and, and uh, the great thing with uh, Schoology is they have become a, a, a direct partner with uh, Schoology and PowerSchool and uh, the ability to uh, we do use the gradebook in Schoology, but as we say, this, the gradebook in Schoology is a reference point. It's not the official gradebook, um, which we use PowerSchool as our official gradebook. So for our teachers, they may be able to collect grades and then sync it without having to recopy or move those grades over um, has been of great benefit. Um, one of the features that we're using right now, and I didn't put in our slides, but is that we have really um, been appreciative of the fact that Schoology has really pushed in their assessments um, the tech enhanced, which I think all of us as educators, especially dealing with um, many of the aspects of um, high stakes testing, um, you know, tech enhanced always brings some people some nervousness and trepidation. So being able to have those test enhanced questioning where uh, those, uh, they can do drag and drop or they can do uh, bring in pictures into the actual questions um, and having those type of experiences for our students to be comfortable with the idea of Tech Enhance has been a real uh, great benefit with uh, Schoology. Next slide, if I have one. I, and I thought I was done, so excellent. Great, well thank you, Michael. Um, yeah, like I had mentioned, I think Schoology is um, gaining a lot of momentum here um, in Indiana. Um, I know some central Indiana schools in my area um, have adopted them um, as adopted school gene. It's nice that it does work with power schools, so what a great benefit. If you have questions for Michael, please make sure to pop them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end. And now I think we're ready for Judy. Hi. Hi, Judy. Hi. Um, I'm Judy Bremen and I teach at Delphi Community High School. I currently teach graphic design, commercial photography, yearbook publication and marketing. So I use, we use Google Classroom here at Delphi, um, not probably as intensely as we should, but personally I do use it for everything. Next slide, please. Um, some of the things that I look forward to in my setup with Google Classroom is organizing my classes. I see a lot of rep repetition classes. Um, I'll see class, the same classes from year to year, and so um, I organize my classes so that I can retrieve any of that information for future classes or previous classes. Next slide. Google Classroom is set up with easy viewing. You can look at it in different um, realms, the listing or the icons, and you can set those up and be able to view all of those at any time whether or not they're active or archived. Okay, next slide please. Three main parts about Google Classroom that 
I deal with and um, anybody that's using it is the stream, the student section, and the about. Um, about is probably the least amount area that I work with. Um, it has the basic things like the classroom materials, if you have a book online or anything that you need to supply to the student throughout the school year or the course. Um, it also has a Google Drive folder where everything gets um, delivered to as soon as they upload it into Google Classroom. There's the Google Calendar and the Classroom Calendar. Um, under the student section, it um, is where teachers, parents, and students can be emailed to keep that communication line open so that they know what is going on in the classroom. Parents can be invited to view what the student has um, on their agenda and their calendar. It's also where you can add or delete or if you must mute a student. Um, again, that's the email section of it. And then the stream is the largest part of it. It shows the posted assignments, due dates, upcoming um, assignments, topics. It's where you can create your assignments, you can view grades, uh, see those submissions, grade those submissions, return the grades, print out your um, Excel file, and reuse or create new announcements or questions. Next slide, please. Um, everything is accessible from the classroom that you've chosen to deal with. At the top, you have the stream, the students, and the about, and you see a little bit of what the page looks like. This is just one particular class. And down underneath the header, you can see that that's when it tells you your most current assignment that's going to be due. So it's very easy for the students to see what is coming up into um, the due dates that have been placed on this assignment and this um, class. Next. Under the stream, um, again, there's due dates. You can see all the due dates that have been given or have, have um, expected deadlines. You can see different topics, and the topics are used to help sort or um, find assignments that maybe you posted in a, in a couple years earlier or the, the season before. It also shows where you can see if the students have completed assignments. If they're done and uploaded, it'll show that there are so many assignments done, and the students that are not done, you at least can keep track of if people are, are staying on task. <clears throat> Next slide, please. When you go to the students, this is where we connect with the parents and the students. Um, it's a way that you can invite the parents in to see what's going on in the classroom. Um, and you can email them and um, have conversations with the parents. And it sends you right out to Google um, for emails. Next slide, please. What's nice about viewing the individual assignments is that sometimes you get caught up with what everybody else is doing. This allows you to focus on the one student where you can t discuss what has not met, been met, what has been completed, if they've met those due dates, and tracking their accomplishments within the classroom, which at the high school level, middle school, elementary, it's real important that the student can visually see what they've got done or how much they still have to do. Next slide, please. Um, those due dates are also transitioned into the Google Calendar, where it's another way that the students can look to see what is due, um, what's coming up. Sometimes listing the items isn't as visually pleasing to some students that learn different ways, and so by being able to see, being able to see those assignments on a calendar may be more effective for them to understand their um, time restraint. Next slide, please. Again, the most important part to me is the managing of assignments and communicating with parents and students. And under the stream, you can do all of these things. Um, time stamping for submissions, if, the, if your um, due dates are critical, you can see that they're doing their assignments on a timely basis and adjust those deadlines, return grades, make comments, um, private comments so that the rest of the students don't see it, and also to be able to grade assignments and students not be able to see that until you're ready to post the entire class. Next slide, please. There are four different things that you can do in Google Classroom. Um, you can create a new assignment. You can create an announcement. 
you can create a question or you can reuse a previous assignment. I do a little bit of everything. Um, there are nice things about being able to reuse the assignment, especially if you're teaching the same course year after year, semester after semester. And so to reuse an assignment, you can go back in there, find the assignment, adjust the due dates, the time frames, um, any other details that need to be adjusted for the pertinent assignment and post that out to the students. Next slide, please. All right. Um, we find that time stamping assignments is very important. Those due, due dates and deadlines um, sometimes get overlooked. And so having that verification and that support of having it online so parents can visualize when the assignment was done and if their child was able to meet those deadlines. Next slide. Any kinds of any kind of um, attachments can be added. Your URLs, your YouTube computer files, Google Drive files can all be uploaded and not limited what, to what you can add to a particular assignment. Next slide. Um, you can share the same assignment with other classes if you have duplicate assignments, which is very nice so that you don't have to reuse, go find the assignment. You can just post it to all the classes that are going to be used it using that same um, assignment. Next slide, please. Um, here's an example of how the reuse looks, where you can go to the class, whether it be archived or active, scroll through the assignments, find them. You can also sort by topics to find those assignments. And then you post reuse, and the assignment comes up. You assign it a due date and a time, and you're ready to post it to the student. Next slide. This is this another sign where you can see where the student has completed or not. And until you return the assignments, nobody can see the grade that you have given that student until repo, um, returning it. Next slide. Because I'm a visual arts teacher and I need to see assignments, this is a great viewing process for me so that I can see the student, I can see the file name, I can see the little um, thumbnails of their assignments. I can assign the grade va value. I can give them the grades. I can make private comments to the student about the assignment. And it's all recorded um, so that I have validation that I have communicated with the student. Next slide. It also shows the done assignments, not done, so you can keep track of what your students are accomplishing. Um, it also will tell you when those assignments were done, if they were done late, if they're missing, if they've resubmitted. Next slide, please. Uh, once again, you can find out the timestamp under the history. Um, file names are real important, but I won't go into that. There's where you can leave the message for the student and um, the student's name and grade. Next slide, please. All right. Um, again, it tells you every part of that assignment and how it is being recorded as being completed. Next slide. When the assignments are returned, the students get the, the grade. They've already gotten the post that you've put on the, the communication. And once you get it returned, then you're ready to print out your, your spreadsheet. Next slide. When I see that all three categories are completed, I'm ready to Excel that or um, export that file. It can come in as a Google spreadsheet or an Excel file. You can do all the classes or you can do one class at a time. Next slide. It's really busy. Um, here's just an example of the choices you have to export that file and how many assignments you can get on that spreadsheet. Next slide. So unlike some of the other um, LMSs and um, grade formats, 
we do have to transfer our information over into our um, Skyward, but at this point, it seems to work for the teachers that use it to this um, extent. Next slide. So as a teacher, what it does for me, it keeps me organized, it lets me communicate with the students or the parents without sending an email or um, taking a lot of time out of my, my schedule. The, I'm organized very task oriented. Um, it's scheduled, it's on the calendars, the students know. They can always find a reference area to find the due dates and the times. Um, it makes lesson preparation easy. Um, it's easy to record and track grades. And it's also easy viewing for me to see what they're doing on their digital assignment. I think that's it. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, well, thank you, Judy. Um, we do have a rather large following in Indiana, Google Classroom, um, although not a full functioning LMS with not quite as many features as it. It definitely has some wonderful features, um, and it, it can be used um, as an LMS, especially for that workflow component. So thanks for right, sharing. Right, right. Because we're such a small school, it, it works for us right now. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have found that it's worked for them, especially if they're not quite ready to commit and spend um, right. money on an LMS and pay per student. It's, it's really been a good alternative. Right, right. All right, well, thank you. Well, we don't have any questions in the chat box as of yet, so I'll wait just a few seconds, to see if anybody has a question to ask. And if not, we will give you almost 13 minutes back. Does anyone um, have an answer for Deborah? She asked, um, do your learning management platforms, um, do they have a way that allows for a student to turn in an assignment if they don't have internet at home? And if not, do you have a workaround for that? Somewhere they can download it at school, at school when they do have internet and access it at home. Um, maybe you are a Gaffe district and you use offline editing. Um, anyone have a response to that? Is it okay if I use the phone to speak? Is that is that good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Please. Thank you, Michael. This, this is Mike Dibisquale up in Portage. We're we're uh, we're um, high free and reduced. You know, we're we're close to 60% free and reduced, so that's always a concern of ours. Um, so one of the things that we do is we work with our our our, our teachers and our students. And so a lot of times our our teachers, first of all, do a great job of being adaptive. Um, so with uh, G Suite, you can have uh, on an iPad because we're a one-to-one -one district iPad is we actually have the students uh, go ahead and work in, um, you know, in that offline mode, uh, complete their work, and then when they come back to school in the morning, we have a lot of kids that, you know, if they didn't have access that night or they weren't at home where their Wi-Fi is at, um, you know, maybe they stayed at grandma's or whatever it is, um, they can come back to school and first thing in the morning we'll see them in our media centers or um, throughout our buildings literally just sitting down and, and uploading those items to Schoology in the morning when they're uh, – uh, able to get back on our Wi-Fi here at school. Great, thanks for sharing that. Um, Sarah, Mitch, did you guys um, have any thoughts on that regarding your learning management system or features that really help with that situation? Um, this is Sarah. Ours is it's kind of the same. Um, we are a Google, um, a G Suite school, um, so a lot of our um, a lot of the, the content is going to be able to be um, used offline. We have one-to-one -one Chromebooks um, through ninth, and then um, BYOD at the high school. Um, so our students um, are able to use those the, the Google products, and then um, and a lot of them know how to convert. So if if it is a Microsoft. Um, a document, then they know how to, to to work with that offline, and then upload again when they get to school when they when they have that um, that Wi-Fi connection, or 
um, a lot of our students are going out to, to other places where there is Wi-Fi. Great, thank you. And Mitch said he has students download components before they come home and then set the deadline before class starts. Um, so kind of allowing them the opportunity to get to school and connect um, that way. I know some districts too, and this kind of goes beyond the LMS election, but they work um, with community partners and local businesses, especially in more rural areas um, where, you know, they encourage students to go to businesses across town and um, take advantage of their Wi-Fi if they don't have it at home. So um, a lot of neat partnerships that have evolved um, from this as well. It goes beyond this conversation, but a neat opportunity. Um, Marissa asked, how, much, how do we find out how much money each of these costs? Um, I think, well, Google Classroom um, is a free platform that's offered through the G Suite. and um, I know that Canvas has come down in cost over the last couple of years. Um, if I had to guess, I would say the average for these would be three to five dollars per student. I know, Michael, it's been a few years since you guys adopted and the price of Schoology um, may be different now. I think Schoology is a little bit more than Canvas at this time. And I'm not sure about its learning. That would definitely be a conversation um, for your tech department though, to have, um, and that would obviously be part of um, that evaluation process when you are comparing platforms. So. Well, if no one else has questions, um, we will thank our presenters once again for sharing today. Um, don't forget to stay in touch with us. Um, via our website, doe.ia.gov slash e-learning. Um, check out future webinar opportunities through the e-learning lab. Obviously, you can follow and connect with us on Twitter. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out if you want help with that. Obvious, um, also, we have um, a Google Plus um, network, um, especially for our coaches. If we have any coaches out there, we have a really lively coaches community. And um, we have a collection of resources organized via Pinterest. Um, and then we have Facebook as well, where we share, share a lot of the things that we share via Twitter on Facebook as well. And then lastly, we have an Instagram account. And we have a really neat um, program where we actually let districts take over our Instagram accounts and share their digital learning story throughout the week. So if you're at a district and you haven't taken the opportunity to share your district story through our Instagram takeover, um, feel free to reach out to Mary or myself or anyone on our team, um, and we can try to get you on the schedule. And this, record, this webinar um, has been recorded and an archive of it will be posted um, on YouTube um, by early next week. Thank you to our presenters and thank you, Mary, for producing. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and take your seven minutes and go do something fun. Take care, everybody. Thanks.